In this video, we are going to be discussing the process of selecting a domain name, finding a web host, and publishing our website to the web server. The majority of this discussion is solely for use of web development outside of class. As we know, in the scope of the class, we have the college's web server to publish our individual um, projects on. If we were developing a website for a business, however, we would need to first select a domain name. Of course, I'm applying to I'm applying that to web to businesses that do not already have a, a web presence. Maybe a new business starting out or a business that is you know new to the web. The domain name should be short. It should either be the business name or a description of the business. We should avoid hyphens because it makes it more difficult for somebody to say the domain name verbally, for instance, in an advertisement or even just telling a friend an address over the phone. Also, if people are likely going to be, uh, through typographical errors, going to your website without the hyphens, we certainly don't want them to go to a competitor and end up purchasing from them. We should think about our top-level domains, which is the end of our domain name, the .coms, .edus, .nets. For commercial businesses, .com is still the most common, but a lot of businesses these days often buy their address, their domain name, at other top-level domains as well to avoid uh, losing traffic or other individuals registering a similar address. If you cannot get the name of your business, one thing that you could do is search for other businesses and look at the keywords that you're typing in the search engine in order to obtain your competitor's websites. Those keywords could potentially make up your address. You should avoid using terms that are trademarked, obviously, and you should check to make sure the domain name is available. One of the easiest places to check this is with a domain name registrar. If we had actually been in the classroom, I would ask for a suggestion of a registrar that people were familiar with. In a lot of my classes in the past, people have suggested GoDaddy, so I went ahead and brought their website up. Nothing, you know, favoritism towards them or anything, just that it's a popular site that a lot of people are already aware of this business. But well, we could check our domain name here, and they would let us know if it was available. Once you have decided on a domain name and you register the domain name, it is essential to make sure that you are registering this domain name with an ICANN accredited registrar. Now, you might wonder where you would find that, and there, there is a list, but most of these registrars are not going to be shy about letting you know that they have ICANN accreditation. If I scroll down to the bottom of GoDaddy's page, for instance, we can see the ICANN accredited um, icon down here at the bottom of the page. In fact, you can see the alternative text telling us exactly what that icon is for. So if we had been in the classroom, we could have practiced, you know, gone to a few registrars and seen if we could find out if they were ICANN accredited. There is also a full list of ICANN accredited registrars. So the reason why this is important is that ICANN is the one that keeps the directory of all of these domain names. Registrars need to pay for the right to add you, your, you know, your uh, registration into this directory. If you are not registering your website through an ICANN accredited registrar, one of the things that could happen is that you register a site that you don't actually own. So let's say, or you don't actually own the name of that. So let's say that I decide to start a new company. I'm going to start selling, selling shoes. So I find this wonderful domain name for selling shoes, and I go to a website, and I think that I register it. Um, and, you know, a couple years later, my shoe store is just, um, just 
you know, doing uh, fabulous work and people know my URL. People are routinely going there to uh, purchase shoes for me. I don't want to end up in a situation where I could end up having to buy my address because it, it didn't actually belong to me. It didn't actually register it to myself. So that's uh, something that we want to avoid getting into that situation by making sure that we choose an ICANN accredited registrar. Also, avoiding these free registrations, which typically are associated with companies like that, that sure, it's free to begin with instead of paying the, you know, small amount of money you would pay for the registration, which is typically on the high end about $15 for the, the year. Instead of, of paying that, it would be free. And if you end up forgetting about the website or not going anywhere with the website, then sure, you did save a little bit of money. But if the website does become something, you don't actually own that address. And after you have a... Um, after you have a great deal of traffic going to the website, the address is worth more to you and you end up spending much more than you would have if you had registered the site correctly to begin with. So we want to make sure that we pick an ICANN accredited registrar. And like I said, a lot of, or most, uh, I, I can't imagine one of these accredited registrars not making it visibly apparent that they uh, did fall into that category, but you could also go to the ICANN website and look up uh, a list of registrars. You know, I'm so sorry, as we were scrolling through this page, I actually realized we are on the wrong site. They're not on the, uh, sorry, on the wrong page of the ICANN site. This is just a list of all of our top-level domains. This is the list of accredited registrars. So I, I do apologize for that. I'll make sure that we have the correct link on Blackboard. So now that we have gone ahead and registered our domain name, the next thing that we need to find is a web host. This diagram here is very similar to the diagram that I had on the Web Basics handout when we first met. Uh, that explain the fact that when we build a website on our computer, people don't actually just go, you know, parading through our living room to look at the website. We host the website on a web server, and visitors come to the web server, send their requests to the web server, and the web server delivers them copies of our web page. So we need to choose a host. The book probably gives you a better discussion of this, and we're looking at the electronic copy of the textbook now. But it gives you a checklist to go through to think about things like what operating system you might be concerned with or how much space you need for your website. This is great when we have our site root uh, folder set up and we can tell at a glance exactly how much space our website is taking up. It can help us find a host. Another thing that we could do is go to this site, whoishostingthis.com, and find out who is hosting the sites of, or who hosting the sites for other the pages for other websites that we feel are well hosted. So if we are always going to a site that is regularly up, that we think that wow they they probably have a a good host, we could see who their host actually was. Of course, for bigger sites, we're going to find out that they own their own web server. But, you know, smaller local businesses, perhaps this would be a great tool to find out who they were using for a web host. So we have purchased a domain name. We've registered our domain name to ourselves. We have found a host, a file server that we can uh, where we can upload our pages and individuals can request those pages from the, the web server so our site would be hosted online. From the web server at this point we would be um, getting a, a list of FTP settings and we're looking at the FTP settings for the uh, student web server because we're going to now look at how we can upload through Dreamweaver. 
and at that point we'd be using the, the student FTP settings. So we could upload through Core FTP, like we did at the beginning of the class if you used Core FTP or some other FTP client to upload that sample file that was due as part of Phase 1, we could still do that. We could still upload our files now that same way. But we can also upload through Dreamweaver. And if we have a more complicated file structure, it is generally easier to just let Dreamweaver take care of the upload for us. The first thing we're going to want to do is enter our FTP settings in Dreamweaver. And to do this, we're going to click on Site and then Manage Sites. This is the same window that we access. This is the, here's the pop-up window that comes up when we choose Site and then Manage Sites. This is the same window that comes up when we uh, mapped our Images folder to the Site Root folder. We did that under Advanced Settings. We mapped our Images folder to the Site Root folder. If we click on Servers, however, remember we clicked on Advanced Settings to map our Images folder, but we'll click on Servers to go ahead and configure our server. So you might have already grasped this from the idea that we went to Site and then Manage Sites first, but essentially I can set up new configuration settings through Dreamweaver for, every for each individual Site Root folder that I've defined. And then I'm going to click on the plus symbol, and I will receive another dialog box. In this dialog box, I want to go ahead and type in my... FTP settings. In a real life scenario, your host would have provided these settings for you. I had stopped for a minute in case anybody was trying to copy them down, although they are the same that we used when we were uploading that portion for phase one. When we're done, we're going to go ahead and just click Done. And then we're going to be using the Files panel. Where the Files panel is here, in the drop-down arrow, I clicked my Site Root folder. But there are a few other icons to the Files panel. Once I have configured those FTP settings, I can also use the icon for Connect. Looks like a plug that when it is connected, these two pieces are actually joined. After I've connected to the file server, I can use the put command to put my files onto the file server. And I could use the get command to get things off the file server. For some reason, I didn't have my files with me and I wanted to go to a computer with another copy of Dreamweaver and grab the files. I could have used the get command to pull the files down off the file server. So put uploads the file, get downloads the files. The files panel also does a number of other interesting things with regards to uploading the site. This is the electronic copy of our textbook, the Visual Quick Start Guide for Dreamweaver. I wanted to look at this just to show you that there are other options available in the Files panel. So we know that we can click on Connect. Once those FTP settings are established, we could just use the plug uh, symbol to connect. We can use the Get and Put. The Refresh just creates a a, a new view of what's going on in the, the files panel. Uh, but I wanted to show you the check in and check out features. If you were actually uh, using Dreamweaver in a business perspective where you were working with other people, multiple people creating the site, the check in and check out features allow you to mark files that you're working on so that other people could not be making edits or changing them while you were working on them. And we could see who was working on the 
the material at the, the same time. Finally, there's an ability to generate a report. And when you are generating the report, you can, it's just under, like it has, says here, site reports. You can see a log of all of the files that were uploaded and by whom, when um, material had been checked out, etc. So those are just features that you would use in, you know, a business setting where multiple people were working on the site simultaneously. But for your project, if you choose to upload through Dreamweaver, you're going to want to look at this document. It was provided by the, the college about logging into the server through Dreamweaver, establishing those FTP settings um, in Dreamweaver so that you could connect with the files panel. I will make sure that this is bookmarked under the project tab on Blackboard. So this is the end of our discussion on domain name registration, um, hosting, and uploading, or FTP, the file transfer protocol of our site to the, the web server. To just sort of summarize, in a real life situation, we would have needed to purchase a domain name have that registered to our business using an ICANN accredited registrar. We would then need to po purchase hosting. Some registrars offer hosting, or we might want to go to a separate registrar, but the hosting service would provide space on a web server to host our files and to send those files to individuals that had requested our site. And then we would FTP our site. Um, we would use, excuse me, we would use a separate FTP client or we would use the tools within Dreamweaver to upload our site uh, to the, the file server where we had that hosting space. I'm going to go ahead and end the video now.